In this demonstration, we're going to talk about the workflow feature under the control panel under the form setting here. So in the form section, we do have this workflow option to be able to set up a workflow when a form is submitted to trigger a task to another user. So in this instance, I'm actually going to set up a workflow for an incident investigation. So first I'm going to pop into my form section and from my library here, I am going to clone over our first report of incident and then also our incident investigation. So I'm just going to search here for my first report of incident and import that over. And then I'm going to close this dialog box. And then I'm actually going to import over our incident investigation report as well. And so now sitting in my form section, I have the first report of incident and then the investigation. Um, what I'm going to want to happen here with the workflow is that when the employee who gets injured fills out the first report of incident, it automatically triggers a task to their supervisor for the incident investigation to take place. So we're going to set that up under the control panel and then under this workflow list here. We're going to add our workflow here, or when you come in after you have one added, you'll actually click this add plus button here to be able to add your workflows going forward. Here you'll just title what is happening. Um, it's just an internal title. So when you look at that workflow list, you know what's happening. So in this case, I'm going to call this one the incident investigation. And then now I'm going to say what is going to activate this workflow. In this case, I want this form to say every time this form is submitted, we're going to activate this workflow to trigger this task. There are cool features under activate workflow response or when a response is something selected within the form. So you can click edit here and you can add a condition that's something within the form. So if you only wanted to trigger this investigation, when it's a certain severity level, you can toggle that by selecting high and let's say life threatening. And then now anytime in the form for that first report of incident, the severity level is high or life threatening, then it's going to trigger this task. You'll hit continue here and then save your changes. And now it says here, activate that workflow when the response is the severity level is high or life-threatening. You can change that for when a user submits a form. We call the observer the user logged in submitting that form. So you can kind of set those same conditions accordingly as well. If you do need it for all responses, anytime that form is submitted, you'll just remove this condition and save, and it goes back to for all responses there. If you click the advanced settings, you're actually going to see options to set up your notifications. So you can set up notifications when the workflow is activated, when it's been completed, and then if you allow it to be stopped under any certain condition. You'll see when you add the workflow activated and or stopped or completed, you're going to see the same options for the original person submitting the form, their HSE assigned to their profile, the mentor, manager, or supervisor. If you want to toggle it to a certain person or specific person, you can add the group notification here. So you can say, hey, if it needs to go to Elena Adair every single time, I want to send that notification every time the workflow has been completed. You can save your changes accordingly from there. And then now every time this workflow is completed, it's going to send that notification directly to me. I'm going to remove this condition here. So I'm going to go back to delete that. And also, if you don't want to call it complete or stop, you can actually rename these to accept or continue or sign off. Um, if you want it to say stop, reject, terminate, or end, you can rename these accordingly as well. I'm going to go ahead and hide these advanced settings. 
Now we're going to add our steps here. So if we need that incident investigation triggered by the supervisor, we can just title that here. You can set a deadline for that as well. It doesn't remove the task, but it, it will change the color once it goes past that deadline to red. And then once you save your changes here, you're going to see a few steps here. Um, most workflows are only set with one and two, uh, but if you do need to hide a certain step or a previous step, you can set visibility to hide certain steps from other uh, visible parties. And then also you can configure step notifications as well on an individual basis instead of overall whole. Uh, most people, again, step one, two, maybe four, um, but they do give you the options to do all four can, on that configuration. The action title is what you pretty much typed in. You can give an additional directions, not required though, if you need to. You'll see here it has options to complete the task. If you actually don't require anything, they just get an option to mark that task complete and it just moves on to the next step from there. So if you do want to require a signature or notes, um, there's also that option to allow that stop. Just note that whenever it is stopped, it isn't going to proceed any further on the workflow. Um, you can allow a reassign. So if they need to reassign it to another user or if you want it to stay on that specific user it's assigned to, you can leave that toggled off. Um, in this case, I actually want to have them submit that other form. So I am going to toggle this incident investigation report here. And then also here, you can also toggle some conditions as well that need to be met to kind of complete this action. You can identify the responsible party here by clicking edit. And then now you get the options if so-and-so is over a certain one, or you can add conditions here accordingly based off of their job title, their location, line of business. Um, but if you're talking about their profile data, you'll actually select employees relation to workflow here. And then once you select that, you're actually going to see that you get that option for the data assigned on their profile. So their supervisor of the person submitting the form, the manager, mentor, HSC, if you needed it to toggle to the original submitter, you can do that as well. And then another cool feature with the workflow is if you have a select field. So I'll, I'll pop over to my forms here and look at this incident investigation in the edit, or excuse me, incident report here in edit mode. If we look at this injured name here, it's a select field and it is tied to the source of our employee source. And then as well as the supervisor is also tied to the employee source where when the user is filling out this form, they actually toggle the name of the injured and their supervisor. And the workflow will also allow you to say when that person selected, you can toggle that step to trigger to that person selected. So if you did want them to select it and toggle to that supervisor in the form, you can do that as a manual process. Or if you want it to go based off of their profile data, then you can toggle it to their supervisor here. Once you hit continue here, you'll see that it creates that employee's relation to workflow as supervisor to the original observer and you save your changes from there. Another neat thing that you can do with workflows is if they did need to be toggled to certain supervisors, you can do different things here by saying, anytime the original submission, the location is, if you had a different location here, I don't have a location filled unfortunately, but let's say if it was the customer care manager, here needs to get assigned to Elena instead, 
you can save that here and then add another assignment. It will require a fallback. So it always, when you're adding those assignments, you do need to define a fallback person in case this condition isn't met in the form, then it has a fallback person to assign that task to. But then from there, you can add additional assignments that are toggled to different users within the same workflow based off of certain conditions within your form. In this case, I'll just kind of delete these assignments and we are going to remove this condition here and save our changes for any response and change this back to assign to our employees relation to the workflow as the supervisor and hit save. And then now if I don't want to uh, toggle any notifications for this particular step, I just hit save at this point. And now I can see I have my step here. You're actually going to see two options here now. Um, you can add another step action or you can add a step. Um, what's really nice about this difference here is you can have two steps going simultaneously with the step actions and then you can have a sequential order where it won't toggle to the next step until step one is fully completed with all of its step actions. So if you need a simultaneous like sign off thing, you can add step off or step actions to happen simultaneously and then it won't toggle into the next step until step one is completed. Um, so that does allow you to have either a simultaneous or a sequential order to happen. So now once you have this incident investigation saved here, you can go ahead and save your changes. And now I'll show you what it looks like in action. Um, so I'm actually gonna go to my profile here and toggle myself as my supervisor so that when I fill out that first report of incident, it automatically toggles the task to me so that I could show you what it looks like. So first here, we're going to go into our form section and fill out that first report of incident. We're just going to mark some options here. We're going to say that I'm the injured party here. We're going to just type in some test data. And then we're going to submit the form. Once that form is submitted, it will toggle that task to me as a supervisor here. And actually you can see that right there. It's this little workflow task here. It says assign the incident investigation. What's really great about these workflows is you're gonna see this side-by-side -side view of everything that was typed in by that first report of incident here. And then I get the option to uh, click into my task for that incident investigation report right here. Um, so now I can go through and fill out the details again of that incident investigation accordingly. Um, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and click submit here. And then now on my home page, that should remove that task. I may need to refresh my page. There we go. It removes that task once I refresh my page. And now that gets kind of housed under your workflow report here. So if you need to kind of toggle back into that, this is also a great feature to see any of those workflows, the current status. What's also cool is you can pull different columns on screen so you can see the workflow, who it was originally um, submitted from the original submission of the form, any of those incomplete actions if you wanted to see that data. And now I get this little report view as a whole across the board for any of those workflows that are in progress. Um, what's also nice is I can view a nice transcript here that shows that whole workflow report here in a PDF document. So if I click on my PDFs here, I could generate a nice workflow report that would show the response of the first incident and then also that incident investigation. If it was a step for a sign off or a note, something like that, it would show a similar process where you're gonna see the original submitted form. And then once you scroll down, you would see the next task in line of what 
task you triggered through the workflow. So great handy feature for there. Another thing I like to point out that is really great for the workflows is if you're analyzing those forms on an individual basis. So for example, if we pop back into our forms and then we go into our form responses for that first report of incident and search for our last seven days here and click into the details of this report I submitted, you're actually gonna get this nice link here to that workflow transcript. So this shows you right here that it is part of a workflow that you can pull that report and see that again, either on screen by that side-by-side -side view of every task that has been completed or in progress. And then again, it spit that out into a PDF report that you can see and kind of see that side-by-side -side view as well. Um, of the original submission and then that incident investigation from there. Um, one other thing I wanna show you with this incident investigation, there is a toggle within this form for the OSHA reportable. So if I actually search here for my OSHA, we have a little toggle here that says, is this an OSHA reportable, yes or no? And then you could toggle a workflow to trigger that task to come into your OSHA case management system if they say yes and create that new case accordingly. So we'll kind of walk through quickly that process. So if you pop back into your control panel, you'll actually click on your workflow list here again, and you'll create a new workflow report here that is gonna be an OSHA reportable. The workflow activation in this case is going to be that incident investigation form that they're submitting. And then when we toggle the workflow activation, we want to say not every condition or not every response, we want to edit this and add a condition to say only when that question is yes. So we're going to find that question in our list here. And then we're going to select our yes option hit continue and save our changes. And now the workflow is only gonna activate and trigger this step action when it is an OSHA recordable. So now we're gonna add a step here to enter the OSHA case detail, something like that. Save our changes here. And then again, in this case, we're gonna submit a form and you'll actually see you have that OSHA case right there, OSHA recordable incident right there. Um, in this case, I'm gonna say, hey, if they're an admin, I wanna toggle it to an admin of the site because admins typically only have access to submit that data for the OSHA case details. So I'm gonna choose employees role here, and then I'm gonna choose that admin role here, and then I'm gonna hit continue. You can see it only matches one person, which is myself. If you had multiples in that same role, what would end up happening is it would assign it to all admins. And then once one of the admins marks it complete, it would remove it from all the other users task list. So you can kind of have a group of employees completing the same task basically. So now we'll save our changes here. And now it's gonna say, we're gonna assign that every time the employee's role is admin. So now we would essentially have two workflows going, one for that incident investigation, toggling that to the supervisor. Then once that incident investigation is submitted, if it has that toggle for yes, it's OSHA recordable, we're gonna submit that conditional option here to enter the OSHA case details. Of course, if you do have any questions regarding any of the workflows and how to set them up, feel free to reach out to our support team at support at kpaehs.com.